Sandy Says Read. Welcome back to the channel. You guys, today we are going to do a review of Written on Her Heart by Kathy Jackson. Um, I will leave in the drop down box below, I'll leave a link to the review of Written on His Heart, which I did um, back before Imaginarium. I picked this up at the Imaginarium convention and Kathy signed it for me. Before we get started, um, I am going to do story time, quick story time, so that we can talk about an item that happens in Chapter 4. There's this one little item in Chapter 4 that kind of concerned me, and I want us to have a discussion of it um, in the comment field below. I want other readers out there to talk about it in the comment field, so we'll have a quick little story time, and then we'll dive into the rest of the review about the book, because this is awesome. Um, okay, story time. In 2006, 2007, right in there, um, I was being released from employment at uh, the university that shall not be named. And there was like a severance package involved. There was like, if I stayed for 60 days, I would get a severance package of some kind, blah, 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 right? At that time, the moron that I was married to uh, let slip during a conversation, something about my benefits package. And I looked at him and said, how do you know about this? What do you know about this? And he had to admit to me that he had gone to the human resources department and talked to the human resources director at the university about my employment, my being laid off, my severance package, what that would mean for his health benefit coverage when I was no longer employed. I mean, he, he had gone there and talked to them about things that he did not have the legal right to discuss with my employer. It was a betrayal. Anyway, um, among many. So I went the next day to the Human Resources Department and laid into them, which was a wonderful experience for me. Anyway, that, having said that, I want to talk about something that happens in Chapter 4. Um, Anise Brandon and Logan Stewart are a wonderful couple who are getting to know each other and learning to trust each other. And in chapter four, um, Logan is at the coffee shop where Anise works and he's talking to her. Her boss is not there. And he mentions to her that he and her boss, Joshua, have had a conversation about their budding relationship. Um, let's see, let me read a little bit for you. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Uh, Logan is talking here and he says, um, I'm glad you prayed with Joshua. He's an excellent man of God. He takes a deep breath. He's my accountability partner. There's a scripture that reads, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I feel close to him and seek his advice on certain matters. And I think this is wonderful. I think this is good. I mean, it shows, um, it shows character with Logan that he has an accountability partner. Um, Joshua is an older is, is older than Logan, so it's good. He has this mentor that he looks up to. That is good. Okay, so Anise answers, Me? Am I certain matters? I couldn't believe Logan had talked to Joshua about us. You are one of the topics Joshua and I discuss. Also he and Jericho. We pray she is safe and I hope she comes back to him soon. We make sure one we make sure one another are treating people the way we love. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm reading too fast. I'm sorry. We make sure one another are treating the people we love the way God would want. You pray Jericho comes back? Joshua would love that, needs that. It's like he's half a hole and the other part is missing. I often catch him wistfully staring out the window. Was he looking for Jericho? Then Anise asks, did you tell him I, about me? I don't finish the sentence. And Logan responds, Couples in a healthy relationship have a myriad of ways expressing their attraction to one another. He clears his throat and breaks off a piece of his cookie. Your pastime wouldn't shock Joshua. That freaked me out. Uh, because of the experience I have had with, you know, idiot stick going to HR behind my back, that kind of freaked me out. He, you know, Logan has a, a mentor and a friend who he is accountable to. That's awesome. I just kind of freaked out that he felt he could continue sharing very private information with that person when that person is Anissa's boss. So 
what I would like is for you guys out there who have read this to share in the comment field below, am I overreacting? Is this okay? I mean, Anise totally forgives him. I mean, she's like, okay, I get it. And they move on. I think, I think it's like two pages later. I don't, um, here we go. Uh, he, his hand covers mine on the counter. Don't be upset. I spoke with Joshua about us. After not confiding in anyone for so many years, it's nice to have a Christian friend who I can speak with. Josh would never talk about us to anyone, so no worries there. For some reason, I couldn't find fault in Logan for speaking to Joshua about us. Joshua hadn't said or intonated their discussion earlier, but he was concerned about his sister. I'm not worried, Logan. I cover his hand with mine. You need Joshua's confidence, and I'm glad you have him. That makes sense to me. I get it. So did I overreact? Did I just freak out for nothing? I, inquiring minds want to know. I, I would like to have that discussion in the comment field below. Let's chat because the rest of this book is wonderful. Um, and, and you can see, I mean, that, that happens in chapter four right there. And then we've got the whole rest of this book where Logan and Anise are in this blossoming relationship. It's got its ups and its downs and and the ups and the downs are happening because there is this wonderful, um, like, I don't want to call it a dichotomy, but there's this wonderful discussion, this wonderful tension going on within Anise. And Kathy Jackson, the author, she handles this brilliantly. Anise has these warring sides going at each other for her. She, she does not believe that she is worthy of Logan Stewart. She doesn't believe she is worthy of his love or anyone else's for that matter. She doesn't believe that she should or could or can have a good loving relationship with the kind of man she wants, period. She doesn't believe it because she's had so much trial and turmoil and, and crap in her past. And there is that, you know, devil on your shoulder that voice in her mind telling her, well, you're right, you suck. You will never have this good thing and you don't deserve it, so give up. And don't chase him, don't pursue him, let him go. But there's this other voice in her mind that's telling her, look, you're loved, you are cared for, you are worthy, you are a good person at heart, you you can be restored, Logan loves you, you know, God loves you, you're gonna be okay. I mean, there's throughout throughout this whole book there are you know these two warring voices in her head and what's truly brilliant is like in one chapter the the negative voice is telling her and like berating her for like sin a and in another chapter this negative voice is berating her for you know problem b you know and in another chapter the negative voice is berating her for problem c i mean it's it's con it's it's changing, it's evolving, it's always something different, new and awful that this negative voice is just dragging her down for. But the encouraging voice is constant. The encouraging voice always has this message of love, of hope, of positivity, of it can be better. That message doesn't change, it's constant. And when I figured that out, as I was reading the book, I'm like, oh, it's like this light bulb went off. I'm like, oh my God. Kathy handles that masterfully. I loved it. It was awesome. This book, I recommend it, obviously. It was not as fast paced as the first book. I think that's that might be by design because there is, I mean, there is that give and take between those two warring voices that, that has to happen. And the kinds of decisions, plural, that Anise has to make, I mean, they're not going to happen overnight. She has to go through these thought processes. She has to go through the mechanics, you know, until she can make these decisions. I mean, that doesn't happen overnight. It's, it's got to take some time. It's got to take all these chapters. It's got to take, how many pages is it? 180? Hold, please. Um, yeah, 178. It takes 178 pages. You know, it's, it, it's not overnight that she makes this decision. It's not one chapter, it's several. I recommend the book. <laughs> I recommend it. Even, even if it's not as fast paced as the first one, you know, we already know the characters, so we don't have to be introduced to them. We, we've got them in our hearts. We're learning alongside them. So I recommend 
written on her heart. And I'm going to leave the, um, the link to the first video, the first review of the first book below. There you go. Um, I'm also going to encourage you guys to subscribe to the channel. Um, what else? Oh yeah, and please click the bell icon so that you'll be notified when I update this channel because it's random. And thank you so much.